Colonel David P. Dempster enlisted in the Air Force at age 19 and qualified for the Aviation Cadet Program. He graduated from Harlingen AFB, Texas, in 1955 was a rated navigator and second lieutenant. During the next 14 years, Dempster flew as a navigator slash bombardier and sack in the B-36, B-47, B-58 Mach 2 Hustler, and the Senior 71. In the Senior 71 program, he was one of eight B-58 crew members chosen to be the original cadre for the Blackbird program. He was also part of the first Air Force contingent to fly operational reconnaissance sorties from Okinawa and two denied areas. The term, denied area, was referred to a specific area over or around a foreign country where you could encounter anything and everything. From Mix to Sam's, as Dempster himself recalls in Richard H. Graham's book Senior 71 Blackbird Stories, Tales and Legends. Jim Watkins was a great pilot to be crewed with in the Blackbird. A Texas cowboy who raced horses in his off time, Jim loved, breathed, and lived for flying. But, like his horses, he felt and handled them with cowboy common sense. Imagine checking out in the Blackbird, a World War II B-24 pilot who flew fighters, transports, KC-97 tankers, and KC-135 tankers at Beale. In tanker, Jim was on the initial ox car team and provided the air refueling support for the 12 seconds flying from the ranch. Jim checked out in the Senior 71 like a cowboy putting on an old familiar leather glove. We were honored to be among the four Senior 71 crews selected to deploy for the first time to Okinawa in March 1968. On the 21st of March, the first operational sortie flew and the crew encountered a double engine flame out during descent to their tanker as they exited the target area. After refueling, they returned to Okinawa. A week later the second operational sortie flew, and again, with a different crew and different Blackbird, they encountered the same double engine flame out at the start of their descent. They landed in Thailand due to the left generator not working. What was happening? Both planes checked out good on the ground after landing and we had lots of job owning among ourselves and with Lockheed Tech reps, with no conclusions. Then, on the 19th of April 1968, Jim and I launched on the third operational sortie, the first for us and crew chief technical sergeant Bud Martin's number 974. We zipped through the target area with no problems and began the start descent checklist. As Jim pulled the throttle back to the RPM setting called for in our procedures, we had a double engine flame out. Excitement, adrenaline pumping, and we dropped like a rocket to northern Laos. Jim got both engines started around 30,000 feet, and we headed south. Our tanker, the real hero of this story, saw our rate of closure on him stop. He knew what had happened and headed north immediately, unprotected, into enemy territory and run. Devoused with us. Refueling with him, we headed back into Thailand and proceeded to our pre-planned entry fueling point. What to do now? We were scheduled to go back to the target area for another hot loop. Over the intercom, I heard this common sense cowboy say, Dave, I think if when we start our descent, we hold a higher than normal RPM we can avoid the flame routes. Want to give it a try? Sir, I answered. We accelerated back to Mach 3, plus in on course into the target area. We eyeballed adding about 30 miles to the start descent range and when the time came Jim's theory worked perfectly. No flame outs in a smooth descent. What was the secret and why did this work? The answer turned out to be the way the engine's fuel controls were programmed. 
They used standard adiabatic collapse rates, which engineers all over the world assumed depicted the height of the tropopause and outside air temperatures at varying altitudes. Wrong. What we discovered was that in Southeast Asia, the tropopause and magnificent thunderstorms we would look down on could go as high as 65,000 feet, rather than the textbook 55,000 feet. Pratt and Whitney Company eventually reprogrammed the fuel controls correctly and the problem went away. In the interim, however, all of the crews adopted the Cowboys technique and the flamout problems disappeared. The day after this flight, Jim, Technical Sergeant, Bud Martin, and they proudly stenciled the first Habu on the site of number 974, which went on to be so successful that it was dubbed the Chibat, the number one Habu in the 1968 period on Okinawa.